Hello, today I will tell you what are loops, how to use them and in what situations you should use loops. Why even bother using them? So loop is something that can execute a code, a block of code, as many times as you want. There are situations when something like that is very useful. Imagine a situation like that. You want to get to the result. So we will do something like document get element by ID result. And now uh, we will save it inside the variable like that result. And now we'll get to the result in our HTML. And I would like to add video courses to it. So I will do something like that video courses um, and zero. As you can see, we have got now PHP. I want to add another one. So hey, let's do it. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I should have all of them now. What if I wanted now add the break line? Okay, that's a good idea. Let's add the break line. I have to do it now here, 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 here. It takes time, right? But do you, don't you see the similarities between all these lines? They are almost the same, right? We are just repeating ourselves. And we have got here in every place, what? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Only one difference. There is one small difference in this code by just the number is changing, right? The number is changing by one. So we can use something like that. What is called loop because the loop can execute a line of code as many times as you want. How to use a loop? You type the name of loop. There are many loops. In this lesson, we learned two of them. The first one is called while, which is, which is doing, which is gonna do execute the code until the expression inside here is gonna be true, okay? So what can this expression be? We can create, for example, a variable i, and if it's lower than five, then we'll execute things between these curly braces. Uh, we have got here a warning because we didn't create a variable i, so we have to create it and initialize it with the zero, so mm, we know that this is a number. And now there is a problem with this loop. This loop will run indefinitely. If I did something like, for example, um, alert, I now we'll see in to infi infinite windows. We'll just see first window, then the second, then the third, and five hundred fifty and fifth, and, and bam, 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 infinite. Okay, because zero is always lower than five, right? This expression will always be true, and so because of it, this instruction will run forever. Because of it, you have to change inside the loop after, for example, executing all other um, instructions, the i, w using the post incrementator. Post incrementator is increasing the number y by, by one. So it will be like zero, one, is one lower than five? Yeah, so one, two, two is lower than five? Yes, so two. <laughs> so the only thing that is changing in this loop is the variable i. And look at this here. We need something what would change like that. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So this will be perfect situation to use this loop. We could just copy this up here. Let's run this program. As you can see, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 is not shown. Why? Because 5 is not lower than 5. 5 is, uh, 5 is equal 5, right? That's why 5 is not printed. So we can now just change this. To, the, to that place, we can just delete this thing because we don't need it anymore. And uh, here I can just do something like that. Bam. And as you can see, it's working. We just printed all of them at once. Well, we don't have SAS. Why? Because SAS is one, two, three, four, five, six. We should type here six, but hmm, that's still not a good idea to have a six here because when you add something new, uh, we'll need to change it here. So always try to write your code that way that you use it universal way. So uh, when we add here now length, now when you add something here new, 
we will be able to print it out. As you can see, now we can see SAS, but when you add see here something new, so for, exa for example, I created a new course about, um, I don't know, Angular JS, you will see that it's printed out pretty easy. And now we can add very easy the break line like that and bam, it is printed. Inside this loop, you can even make comparisons. So for example, video courses, um, video courses of I, if it's equal to, for example, my SQL, I would like to do something different. I would like to uh, add to the inner HTML something like before, um, hello, and bam, like that. And as you can see before my SQL, we can see now, hello, it's working. <laughs> so the loop is just executing all the instructions inside until this thing, this expression is not true. And as you can see, uh, it's changing only one value, I, that we are changing here and it has to be changed. Otherwise we would have problems, right? Uh, our our fi Firefox uh, would stop working because we would just overload him with too many instructions at once. And uh, it's very useful for, as you can see, going through the array, doing something once and it's gonna be executed many times. Let's uncomment this code here and let's do something even harder. Let's, for example, imagine a situation I want to take programming courses, right? and do something with them. So I will do variable programming courses document get element by ID. I would like to go to the programming courses identificator and then bam that I would like to um, go to get elements by tag name list item. So I have got now here programming courses. Let's take this under the comment. And let's, for example, do something like that. Let's use the result inner HTML and let's now go to the program, uh, add here a program programming courses. What we'll see, as you can see, we have got here object HTML collection, right? So now we can get to each of these list elements. So as you can see now, we have got list element and now bam, that in our HTML we can type and we'll get what C++. If we change this to one, we'll get C sharp. If we change this to two, we'll get Java. Pretty awesome, isn't it? Okay, so um, we can now change only this value in order to, for example, print all the things from the programming courses, right? And we can do also some things with them. We can do some operations on them. So we need a loop. Why? We need to create a variable i. Okay, of course you can call it whatever you want. If i is lower than, it's a good idea to take all of the courses. So programming courses, bam, length. Then we want to execute the code like that. Oh, and I just crashed our Firefox because I didn't add this thing. Okay, I reopened the Firefox and as you can see now we have got C++, C Sharp and Java printed out easy. And we can add here, for example, the break line, right? Like that, for example. And it's working fine. And we can now add anything on our website. That's the most important part, part like that. And as you can see, added it here and it instantly was added here. So, you know, this code we are just printing uh, in another place, but you don't need to print it out. You could do some operations. You could send the, uh, the values to some kind of program that would send it uh, to the database later or other things like that. Whatever, you can do whatever with whatever information of your website pretty fast now because you can go through all of these elements at once. That is very, very awesome, isn't it? And now I would like to train with you a bit more, uh, for example, functions, because imagine a situation like that. We do, we do not want programming courses now. We would like have web development courses. We'll need to uh, what? just change all these things to the web development, right? And now we have got web development. But if I wanted both at once, 
I would need to have both time the same code. And now imagine a situation where you would need to do it at least five times. And you would then need to change something in code, one thing. You would need to change in five places at once. In situations like that, you should instantly think something like, hey, it's a good idea to create a function. So function uh, that will, for example, uh, print print courses, whatever. And here we'll take as a parameter the ID of unordered list, okay? And now we could just copy this here. And we just need to do what? ID of unordered list is here. This is a variable, so it shouldn't be like that. And here we will not call it programming courses, but whatever, just courses. And now we can just invoke it. So, so print courses and I just need to send, hey, I want this one. And bam, we have got now programming courses. Hey, I want to uh, the web development courses. And I have web development courses. I want both courses. And I have both courses at once. That is just awesome, isn't it? So now you can see why I showed you with so many lessons, uh, all these functions, things, all these, uh, all these variables, why I talk about it so much. Because when you understand this thing, you can create a code, which is the most important, that can be easily changed later, right? That will work always without you making, making too much effort, right? And everybody, th this is very cool, we understand your code because of it. There is also another loop which is called do while. We could do something like do and then do while like that. Let's take this under the comment and let's copy it here. As you can see, it's working the same, but there is a small difference bef between the do, while, and why. What's the difference? When you are doing a do while loop, you always will execute the thing here, which means that even if the expression like that is not true at the beginning, at least once this thing will be run. And. Uh, this time we are using here a value 551,251 uh, here. So let's change it to zero for, for a second. As you can see, we printed PHP at least once, right? And if we change this to this loop, so we do something like that. And to change it to zero. As you can see, nothing printed. Why? Because this expression is checked at the beginning, okay? So if it's not true, nothing will be run here. The do while will be run at least once. So that's the difference you should remember about do while and why fun function. I most time use the why function but there can be a situation where you have to use the do while when you want to run something anyway, even if, uh, the, if the even if the condition is not true. So let's uncomment this. And the cool thing about all things like that is that now we can, you know, check something, make a comparison if, for example, the guy here, so for, if courses of the i equals to PHP. I want something special for PHP. So I want to add this is my language. <laughs> and bam. Mm. Is there a PHP inside? PHP, we have PHP. 
Um, okay, we should here add here if inner HTML. This is my language. It's working, right? For PHP, we added something like that. Now we can change these to, for example, the compass. And it's still working. Or we can also do something like or it equals to MySQL. And we have got it now with the PHP. Oh, I typed it probably the wrong way. Oh, let's use I don't know, Java. As you can see, now it is here and it is here. So that's when you can do something special for both of things. That's why you need operators like that. As you can see, our programs are becoming a bit more complex, but that's how it's gonna be in the future. Okay, that's all in that lesson. Thank you very much.